Welcome back! Last thing that we are going to do is add our tree layer into our biome generator into additional layer handler. Now, as you might recall, let's add it as the second layer. As you might recall, if we go to our biome generator, we have created this pretty extendable solutions that uh, for each additional layer handler, after we loop through each Y value, we are going to run once this layer handler. Now, in case we do not want to place trees, we may want to limit this and not run this tree generator in case we have this tree generator to be empty and if this layer handler is of type tree layer handler. But for the sake of maintainability, this is a pretty neat solution because you simply add a layer and you have, do not have to modify this biome generator script in terms of this algorithm that is currently working fine. So let's go back to Unity. So now if we try pressing play, we will see a bit strange result. Okay. And as you can see, only two trees were placed on our map. So this indicates that I've made an error when uh, getting the coordinates for our check. So what we need to do is go to our tree layer handler script, click on this and edit this script. And here I have made a mistake when uh, checking the uh, with the coordinate system. Basically, our X, Y and Z are in the chunk coordinate system, but our tree positions are in the world coordinate system. So what we want to do first is inside this if check, when we are checking if our surface height noise is less than terrain height limit, we need to check chunk data tree data tree positions contains the chunk data dot world position dot x plus this x, and we are going to do the same for our z position. So we are going to type chunk data dot world position dot z plus z. This will check the correct value in our list of tree positions, and we will be able to progress. Now our chunk coordinates are really the new vector three int x surface height noise and z. So those are the coordinates in the chunk local coordinate system. Next, we are going to get that block type equals get block type from uh, chunk coordinates and we simply pass this and we are going to get the correct uh, block type. We are going to compare it and basically we do not need to have this local position calculation because we already have this chunk coordinates. So we are going to pass the chunk coordinates to set the block and to change the y value and then to set uh, the block of this. Okay, so now we are using the correct coordinate system to check the world, po uh, the world coordinate system to check the tree positions and next we are going to check the chunk coordinate system to get the block type and set the block to the correct type. Let's save it, let's go back to Unity. Okay, let's press play again, let's regenerate our world and let's see if now our tree trunks are placed all around the map and I can see so far that this is the case. So now as you can see higher up there are no trees but the tree trunks are placed around our map. Now there are spots like this where a couple of trees are placed together but let's call it a feature for now. Okay so as you can see there are tree trunks around our map placed and uh, those are not placed in the visual uh, local minimas or local maximas because as you might recall we are using a different noise generation settings to generate our tree trunks so those are the local maximas of a separate noise function but basically here we have a couple of trees placed around our world and they will be placed around other chunks as well because we have integrated those into the process of our procedural generation last thing that we need to do is tree leaves so let's stop the game and let's modify our uh, tree layer handler. So you can have different trees, you can create some sort of scriptable object to store the positions of uh, what uh, offset you should add to place your tree leaves. I have simply created a list, a very long list of the positions where I want to place my trees, uh, my tree leaves, and this will simply create this uh, sort of a, py a pyramid shape from those voxels. So you can type it out or you can check the GitHub repository and copy those values. But basically those are all the values that you want to set uh, to uh, create this pyramid shape like 
tree leaves on top of your tree trunk. Okay, if you have those trees or just add a couple of those, for example, those few, to generate something, so now we need to use it. So now what we can do is simply create a for each loop vector 3 int leaf position in tree leaves static layout. So this is this. And we are going to set chunk data dot tree data dot tree leaf solid. And we are going to add a new vector 3. We are going to get the x plus leaf position x uh, surface noise height plus 5. So this is the height which we have used here. And for z value we are going to do basically the same. Z plus the offset of a leaf position. And we are going to set the tree data tree leaves solid at those positions. So what we want to do now is open our world script. So let's save this. Let's go back to Unity. And we are going to find our world. And we are going to open our world script. Three dots edit this. Okay, so here we are in our world script. And what we had here is in the uh, generate worlds method, we have been generating all those positions. And at some point we were adding to the world helper data um, our data. So I think if we have removed here our data and chunks. Then we have uh, received our data dictionary from our tasks. And after we were done, we have called this for each and we have added all the data to our world chunk dictionary. Now the point is that we want to have all of those uh, chunk data already created before we can add our tree data so what we will want to do is simply call for each loop bar uh, our uh, chunk data in our uh, world data dot chunk data dictionary and we are going to look for each uh, chunk data there and i think that we need to add here the values to access only the chunk data and we are going to create add tree leaves method and we are going to take in the chunk data now this isn't the prettiest way to add those tree leaves but we need to do this only after all the chunk data uh, are available so if uh, we have uh, still some chunk data being generated by a task we may uh, be accessing this chunk data that is still processed by a separate thread this is why we need to do this after all of this calculation is done so let's right click on this method right now uh, quick uh, quick actions and generate this method right click and go to the definition and here all we need to do is loop for each tree leaf uh, in chunk data tree data tree leaves solid and when we have it we are going to call chunk set block chunk data tree leaf and block type tree leaf solid and this will cause the block to be set but else if this is not available we are going to set the block uh, using the world data helper to access the concrete chunk data and of course this go to the definition so let's go uh, let's file and save all and let's go back to unity okay so let's press play and yet again we are going to discover a bug in our project so if we press play and generate our world strange thing will happen in the center so all of our trees have uh, those um, leaves but some of them have half and in the middle we have this strange structure uh, appearing from nowhere so what is going on we have one more bug let's stop the game and as i have discussed with you uh, we had in our scripts in our world world uh, added this we have created this uh, add tree leaves method that uses the set block if we go to this it uses the local position but if we go to else statement we are calling world help data helper set block and here we are passing the local position but this requires us to pass the, the world position of this block so we are going to add here simply the chunk data dot world position since we are checking this for this chunk data so if it is not in this chunk data to generate a world position we need to add to the local position the chunk data world position now if we save it if we go to the, our set block method it uses the position here to get the, the chunk data and if we go to the this definition a uh, chunk position from block cards uh, here we are getting the position and dividing it by the world dot chunk size so we are here basically calculating the chunk position that is the correct chunk position 
from the world space coordinates. Let's bring be rename it to world position. So if we go back again in our get chunk data, we can rename it to the world block position. Great. And now we will know that we need to pass here a world uh, position. Actually, uh, here we need to change it again. World block position. Okay, so now we will know that here we need to pass the world block position. Great, so let's go back to Unity. Finally, now we should be able to press play. Let's see what is going on here. And now finally our trees will have leaves. And as you can see in our game, some of those trees are bigger than uh, the others because they have two trees near each other. But basically, here we have our tree leaves and our trees placed on our map. And as you can see, we have those trees and they are never placed in the water or in the stony area. But overall, they are placed pretty randomly and we can regenerate them from a save data because we are generating the positions for those using the pearly noise. Of course, you can modify the algorithm to not place two trees together, but this is up to you really how to handle it. For the most part, this is the basic idea of how you could place anything else in your world using the Perlin noise. Now, if you want to learn a bit more about Unity, check out my Make a 2D Platformer in Unity using Design Patterns course. The link will be in the description. And also, thanks a lot to my Patreons. Thanks to your support, guys, I can keep making those unit tutorials. Okay, great. See you in the next video where we are going to start working on the second biome.